take two of this. I started, I got about two minutes into a microphone, wasn't working properly. So this one will be, well, you won't have the technical issues I was dealing with. I was like a minute and a half of me fiddling with shit and just recording it and not going to go back to edit. But we're not going to have that. Um, okay, so basically I am going to a real life event next weekend. So the, like the 22nd and 23rd, I think. Um, and the lists have been reviewed, have been put up and I'm just going to go through them and see what I think basically. Uh, I think there is also a plan for a podcast, but I'm not a huge fan of sitting around and chatting for three hours, which is what those tend to turn into. So um, I don't mind listening to them, but being a part of them, I get a bit bored, to be honest. So we're just going to go through it and see what we think. Um, to be honest, part of this is for me because it gives me time where I'm specifically sitting here going, all right, I'm going to look at all these lists and I'm going to think about them. So when I get to the weekend, I'll actually... Like, I will have done more than skim all the lists, so it's probably going to be helpful for me too. Uh, first up, we have Loki, with basically a high-off list that he's run a lot of before. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think I think there's some slight changes to what he usually does with it, but the, the crux of it is still the same. Um, he has a Pyromaster on a Dragon... He's got a High Prince on a Lion Chariot with a 3-up, 4-up, and a 1-up armor against Magical. Um, he's got a 1-up rerollable Commander on a Horse uh, with a Lance. He doesn't have the Crush Attack, um, which I've seen Loki do great things with before. Like, this guy just always hits with his Crush Attack. I don't understand it. Um, he's got 9 High Bond Lances with the War Banner. 28 Citizen Spears with Legion Standard, 2 units of Reavers in core, um, 6 Knights Rhymer with the Banner of Becoming, a Fire Phoenix with Warden's Bond, he's got 5 Grey Watchers and he's got 2 Seaguard Reavers. So, I think the other version that I typically see Loki running is like, he's got some small units of Queen's Guard and he's got the Citizen Spears split up into 2 units of 20. Um, so I guess it's a little bit better scoring the way he normally runs it. I'm not sure what, like the changes might just be because things have gone up in price and he can't afford everything that he had before. Um, although I'm not actually sure if he could get, maybe his list with the Fire Phoenix didn't have all those things. Um, anyway, I've, I don't, I don't pretend to understand High Elves, but I think this one is pretty well-rounded in that it's got good range damage. Like, if he plays against me, uh, Lockie can sit back and just go, like, I am burning you, I'm shooting you, you have to come to me and I'll dictate the engagements. Um, against lists where he needs to push, he still hasn't invested that heavily in the shooting, so, like, like the, the high off bolt throwers are always good. So, no matter if it's a game where he needs to march forward or not, they're always good. Um, the Grey Watchers probably aren't... I don't really know what their role is. They've got, like, that minus one to hit thing, which is sort of like a charge disincentive. I don't know. I don't know what they do. Uh, I don't know what they really bring to the list, but uh, I'm sure they'll be handy a few times, at least for Lockie. Uh I think it's a pretty solid list in general. I, mean, I feel like I haven't done this in ages. I'm struggling to figure out what I've meant to say about what a list does and if it's good. Um, I think it's pretty good because yeah, I think it's it's reasonably well rounded. Um, it's quite fast when it needs to be. Um, I do kind of wonder if he's a bit lacking in combat threats because, like, as I said, he doesn't have that much range damage. He's got a nice balance, I guess, particularly because the Fire Phoenix is also like a range damage kind of thing. It might be a little bit deceptive, I guess, because while I look at it and go like, ah, uh, there's actually not really many combat units in there, at the same time, it's sort of like, yeah, but what are you getting the points from? Like, Loki will mainly be picking and choosing his combats, at least with the things that are valuable. Um, so I feel like even when Loki's sort of facing a list that he needs to push at, um... He's got good force concentration. 
and even the things that he loses. Like, so, I mean, theoretically, like, dragons could die and everything, but, like, the easy points in his list, the things that sort of look like, are they're actually not that good in combat, um, aren't worth that much. So, I think it's still, I think it makes sense, and I think it'll be the sort of thing where you might feel like you're doing well, but it ends up turning out that, you know, because he's got his dragon there, he's got his lion chariot there, and maybe he's got his BSB and um, his Knights of Rhyme left. It's like you haven't actually got that many points. Um, I think it's pretty solid. Uh, having had a squiz through all the lists when they came out, I don't think it's the best list here. Uh, I've already spoken for five minutes, so I'm moving on. Lucky, good job. Uh, Will has got uh, some dwarves. He's got three dragon seekers with upgrades to make him kill shit. He has got a BSB on shield bearers with runic standard of shielding, which I always found really disappointing, to be honest. I didn't feel like it actually did enough. Um, and rune of readiness, which is something that he included because I told him to. I don't think he knows how to use it, but we'll see. Uh, he's also got a runic smith with two spells. and Oh, and an anvil of power, yes. Yeah. So he's got a decent magic phase, uh, particularly with the runic standard of wisdom further down the list. Uh, big block of Greybeards that can Vanguard. A uh, couple of shooting units, big block of Hold Guardians, regional block of Vanguarding Seekers, Grudge Bust from some Miners. Um, so, I mean, I guess it's not... It's not that really su that surprising where this list is trying to, like, focus on. It's just Dragon Seekers and the Seekers, and then it's got two hard-to-shift blocks. Um... I, I don't think it's very good, to be honest. It doesn't have enough shooting to force the engagement. You're just going to run around the strength, the uh, movement three dwarves and avoid them most of the time when you need to. Um, having a cannon or two would probably be quite helpful for Will's list, I think, to sort of make people, or like sort of dictate their movement a bit. Um, I certainly think that someone playing into it, like as is always the case with dwarves, someone who's... Um, trying to I don't know you you just try and take down the Seekers because you want to kill all those Dragon Seekers and get the points and it's like you, you can't do that like you're not good enough to do that you can't like you don't have the units to do it you can't take it off um, but then there will be some people who can take it off uh, so yeah I think I think the um, the strength of some of those blocks will win will some games uh, as opponents struggle with what to do if they're not going to engage them but uh, I don't think the list is going to be a huge competitor. Um, the cool thing to know about the uh, Thane on shield bearers, and the reason why I told him if he's taking the shield bearers, just take a rune of readiness, um, is because now that the shield bearers have uh, immune to stomp, if you get a monster that's like corner clipping your unit or whatever, because they've combo charge, whatever, you just do a reform so that the monster is only touching your shield bearers or the model on shield bearers. Um, and because it's not touching a model that can be stomped, it can't do a thunder stomp. So I reckon I don't know if do I don't know if dwarves are a book that can like actually really punch above or well, win at the top tables, but I think that Rune of Readiness and War Throne Shield Bearers is a super, super powerful combo. And if a good player was good enough with Dwarves to make good use of them on like a macro scale, um, I think that that would be like an OP ability. It just depends on if Dwarves can actually get the most use out of it or if they're as typical too slow. Um, in general though, I don't think this is a strong list. Um, I don't think Will's played in a long time, but we'll see how it goes. Another Dwarf list, we've got Aaron. Um, this one looks a bit more traditional. So he's got a king on a war throne with like a whole bunch of kit. He's got a Thane on shield bearers with who's his BSB with the typical like Thor's hammer, except not being able to throw it. Um, runic Smith with two battle runes, rune denial and two runes of mastery. An engineer, a big block of greybeards. Um, two units of clans, marksmen, some clan warriors, some whole guardians, some miners, two copters, an organ gun, and a cannon. So theoretically that 
Morgan Gunn's going to have the engineer sitting in a unit of marksman next to it and um, hitting on, I guess, three pass at short, but um, four pass at long range, which is quite handy um, for something as powerful as the organ gun. So in this matchup, I'd definitely take Swarm of Insects and try and deal with that that way uh, and probably try and stay out of its range with everything that's valuable because that would just shred my army. Um, I, I think this one will still suffer from the typical dwarf problem um, where, you know, if you can deal with his organ gun, which is five toughness, four wounds with a five up save, he's going to be chasing his tail a bit, I think, a lot of the time. It'll be hard to get points out of, for sure. Like, because he's going to have that Greybeard block, which will have the BSB and the uh, King on it, and probably the Runic Smith as well. And that'll be a really, really hard block to kill. But a sufficiently mobile list is going to take off probably all the other points and probably avoid losing much. Um, so I think Aaron will have relatively close games a lot of the time. But I don't think he'll be able to sail too high because I kind of think the only dwarf list that can, unless people just... Like, so this isn't enough of a gun line for, to have people just run into you and lose all their points. And it's not MSU enough to make a complicated enough board state that you can take advantage. So I think it'll be solid, but not spectacular. Uh, Hugo. Uh, he's taken a list very similar to this before. Basically, he's got two vampire counts, uh, one a master of evoc, one a master of occultism. They're both kitted out for decent um, combat, but the sort of thing that you would maybe not expect here is the fact that the evocation guy has arcane knowledge for the extra range on snipes whereas the occultism guy doesn't have it and i think that's because with the double master phase um snipes are sort of more reliable in hugo's opinion than um grave calls which is like a really dice greedy spell uh can just be shit and it's still only 18 inch range whereas now hugo's got at minimum the 24 inches uh, for his snipes on Evox, so uh, it makes sense. It makes sense in some ways. I think he probably most of the time won't even take grave calls, uh, is my assumption. Um, he's got some skellies and some zombies and some chaff. A court of the damned, small unit of barrier guard, um, unit of vampire knights, unit of spawn, unit of wing reapers. So basically, like his points are coming from the swift death things and his magic. And I mean, in combat. Uh, his counter obviously can obviously be quite good as well, but um, that's what he's focusing on. I think it's, it's what I mean. There's five scoring units, but really only one of them is very good. Maybe the court of the damned sits in the barrier guard and makes them decent, but yeah, actually that's probably yeah no that's so then he's got actually two decent scoring units because he's got the barrier guard with the court and he's got the vampire knights with the characters so. It's probably pretty solid. I think it's a pretty solid list overall. Um, depends how Hugo plays it. I think it's quite good. Um, I think I played against... It wasn't this exact list, but a similar version that he was running uh, like a year ago. Um, and I think I, I was with my Ogres and I had quite a bit of trouble because his stuff was faster than me in terms of like charge range. Um, he had better ranged output than me. And so I was sort of having to press, but if I got charged, I'd probably lose because, uh, like, the vampire counts in a bus of black knights were too much for me to handle. Um, but then there was a few... I think Hugo missed something with, like, an over... Like, I got an overrun or something, I think, into the, the flank of the uh, double count knight bus and, like... So that was basically it. So I sort of was led in by Hugo making a mistake, I think, there... Um, rather than me outplaying him or his list having any particular vulnerability to that sort of thing that he lost on. So um, I wouldn't really like to see this one again. I think it's pretty solid. Um, but we'll have to see. I, I don't know enough about vamps in this kind of stuff. Sorry, my microphone's just periodically dying on me. And I saw it stopped going, so there might be points earlier in this video <laughs> where it stopped as well, so I don't know. 
we'll see how this ends up. I don't check things or edit them, so I might be ending up uploading blank bits of audio. Um, I think it's a pretty good list, and he is a good player, so I think he'll do pretty well. Um, I don't really know how it, fall, how it goes into the field, because I don't know the, the list well enough, to be honest. Uh, we've got Joss, who's got Empire. So he has a Great Griffin Marshall, he's got a BSB, he's got a Div Adept on Arcane Engine. Um, he has two Prelates, both on foot. Uh, four units of heavy infantry, one of them parent, the other support. Some Electoral Cavs, some Imperial Guards, some Knights of the Sun Griffin, a Cannon and a Steam Tank. Um, I think Joss is, at the moment, going less infantry heavy than he has previously, and I, I'm very disappointed in that. Um, this list is getting less manly every time I see it, I think, but it's still a pretty good effort, because I still think this is like... I mean, it's clearly not a gun line. <laughs> so... Um, I think it's quite solid. It's kind of hard to judge because it's one of those things where I'm like, I've seen it work well, but I don't really understand how because a lot of it's just waves of shit. Um, I guess Arcane Shield is what? It sounds like it's the distracting one, not the lightning reflexes. So that's pretty handy on the Imperial Guard or even the Howard Heavy Infantry. I think it's just one of those things where it just sort of it has so many bodies, it has good static res, and it has decent damage output that it just can grind you down. Um, I think he might have some vulnerability to uh, lists with fast, good force concentration, like, say, Lockie's list that we looked at first, where Lockie can sort of pinpoint a weak spot in the line, blast through it, and go, that's fine, your infantry can just sort of turn around in circles. Um which I don't think Joss has all that much counterplay against unless, like, his artillery does really well. But the way he would counterplay that is just strong objective play. So assuming it's not, like, banners. What's the other one that it wouldn't really work on? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I think most objectives basically would work. So, yeah, so I think Joss will have the objective advantage in most games if he plays it well. Um, which is sort of how to counteract that. I think it's a pretty solid list, and I know that Joss has been using it quite a bit, um, or like a similar version of this quite a bit, so he's going to have a pretty good idea of what he's doing. Um, I think it'll do sort of mid-range-ish. He might sort of shoot up a couple of games and then maybe get cracked down by some of the, the big boys with the really good lists and sort of mid fiddle uh, uh, finish mid-range. Um, that's what I reckon. Anyway, uh, man, there's not much good insight. Eventually we'll get to armies that I understand <laughs> and it is not next. <laughs> so I know I did a KOE review, but I don't know most of the stuff in this KOE army. So he's got a Lord with a blessed inscriptions, bastard sword. So he's strength five. I don't know what prayer etched is. And he's sainted. Sainted. I don't think helps his strength. I think he's strength 5. Rerolls to wound. I think. Strength 5 if he won even maybe. I don't know what prayer etched is. Maybe that's something different. I don't know. He's got a BSB as well. As you would expect. Um, he's got an adept of div and a master of shamanism. Um, 15 feudal knights, so I think, if I recall correctly, are basically the knights of, like, the realm knights. Uh, auto sergeants, but they don't have the upgrade, so I don't think they're gaining wounds back. I think they're just sort of, like, medium cav. Um, some archers, knights of the quest, who are sort of, like, the top tier, um, knight unit in the book. Knights resplendent, who I think are, like, heavy damage output on the charge focused knights. They're sort of, like, a a hammer, whereas the Knights of the Quest are more all round. Uh, and then two units of chaff. So what do we got? We've got basically three big lances. We've got a Lord who I don't think is very good, but he might be better than I expect because I might be misunderstanding or misremembering some of the things with Sainted and I don't know what Prayer Etch does. So in my mind, I don't think that Lord is that great, but who knows? I could be mistaken. 
Um, he's got some good magic to support it, I think. Particularly because this isn't a list that really needs Druidism as much because it doesn't have the strong single models out there. Um, I think it's probably pretty solid. Uh, it might depend... I, I guess it's not, it's not going to be that confusing. Because you're going to have basically four units of knights whose rules you have to remember and a lot of them aren't going to be that different. So... It's really hard to say how this one will do. I don't think it'll have that typical LAB thing of this is new, I don't know what things do. You might make a mistake or two, but I think generally you're like, hey, they're knights, hope I want to make sure they don't charge me, because if they do, I'm in trouble. Um, I think he starts off with... Uh, so I think the auto sergeants are going to be able to give out horizons. I don't think they generate any, but I'm pretty sure they'll be able to help give it out. So that will basically mean with the two damsels and with the auto sergeants. Yeah, he's going to have a pretty good spread where I think he's going to be get going to be able to get horizons basically wherever he needs. Um, and then it's just a case of how well three blocks of knights do against the field. Uh, I think at the moment we haven't really seen... You've got seen two dwarves that would be... I think this would be a good list against the dwarves because he's got ways to deal with the organ gun. Will doesn't have many... I don't think he has any uh, war machines. And I th so I think... I think this is a pretty good list based on the things we've seen so far because I think Kira will be able to pinpoint applying pressure. Um, sort of what I said would be a way that Joss might struggle because um, Kira's going to have the speed advantage he's going to have... Like, we haven't seen, like, tar pity type things or, like, block type things yet. Um, so I think at the moment, this one's looking pretty good in the field. Um, then we got Skilto, who's got ID. He has an Occultism Master, a Turut Commissioner BSB, Toxic Breath Weapon, maybe plus... I don't know if that's plus one word. Maybe Toxic and plus one wound, but definitely Toxic Breath Weapon. Maybe it's not even Toxic anymore. I don't know. Breath Weapon of some sort, and it might do other things as well. He's got a Witchcraft Apprentice uh, with Crystal Ball, which is a new one. It'll be interesting to see how it goes. Uh, some Vassals, which all ID always have. Uh, Citadel Guard with Flintlocks, and the Banner, which is basically the Rune of Readiness. Um, which I think is really cool. But I don't think that Skilltop has the things to truly take advantage of all the dodgy, dodgy reform shit that you can do. Um, so still possibly a handy banner for the not taking standard shoot penalties and being able to reform just generally. But I think uh, maybe a, a seat character would have been handy to have in that unit just to abuse a few things with the reform rules. Um, he's got a big block of anointed for his commission to sit in. A smaller block... Vassal Cav, he's got a Rocket Battery, he's got the Shooty Kadim, and he's got a Citizen Giant. Um, I think it's okay. I think, so Skilto's a good player, and I think he'll do reasonably well. Um, but I don't know, I'm I'm not enamored by these uh, Taruk Anointed. Like, the I just... It doesn't seem strong enough to spend that many points to me. Um, yeah, I feel like I've always felt whenever I played against it, like I have the tools to deal with that. Um, and I've definitely got some games up on the channel where I do that. And I've definitely got some games up where I don't do that. Um, but I just, I don't think that the BSB in them is the best way to run them. I think the units of three or four on their own where they're, they matter less if they die, but they're still just as solid as a combat unit um, is better, basically. Uh, it's a lot of shooting in this list. I don't rate the shooty Kadim. Um, I think it's probably... I think it's hard to use, and I just sort of... Typically, I would rather have a war machine and a monster than have a war machine and a monster in one. Like, it's the thing with the Cyclops where I thought... 
I got better and better at using the Cyclops and it was still hard to use and I still like the the most difficult thing with a monster like the Kadim Titan that when you take the shooty upgrade is knowing when you want to fight and knowing when you want to shoot because you need to be using both or you're there's no point why would you you would just get a um a war like the war machine based one because it's cheaper and it's better so you need to be able to tell when to do what with it which is the real skill with them um and I don't think that they're typically worth the headache, basically. Like with Cyclops, I just sort of went, I don't... Well, Cyclops aren't that good at shooting. And these guys are really short-ranged. So a Nafta thrower is, I think, like 18 inches? Like, yeah. I don't know. I mean, you're spending 420 points. You're still getting a decent model. I just don't rate them all that highly. Uh, skill will definitely do decently well. But I don't think he's going to... Rounds four and five, I don't think Skilto will be pressing for a podium. Early on, he might do well, but I think when push comes to shove, I don't reckon this list has it in him. Um, Ryan's list. Okay. So, I've seen him run similar things before, um, and I don't think it's the strongest Warriors list he can make, but I think it's good enough that you can play like 95% of games without being too disadvantaged. Um, he's got a Chaos Lord on Wasteland Dragon with like a whole bunch of upgrades. Uh, he's got a Doom Lord on a Wasteland Behemoth with a lot less upgrades, but he does have the 18 inch random movement reroll to wound, reroll to move if you want it. Um, he's got 24 Sloth Great Weapon Warriors with the Zealot's Banner. So they're just a really tough unit to shift because they're toughness five um, and they're dishing out presumably running them six wide like 24 25 with champ uh, strength six attacks because you're probably not doing more than 12 wounds to your toughness five unit before they strike um, but it's also a really expensive unit so when you can deal with it uh, it's quite it's quite a loss for Ryan then he's got the random movement section so the five uh, the 500 points, the six wretched ones, the two forsaken ones. He's got five lusts chosen. He's got a chimera. He's got some barbed horsemen. He's got some warhounds. So pretty weak on the scoring front because uh, he's only got the three units and like, I mean, the lusts chosen aren't bad, but they are only 10 wounds. They are only five models. Barb horsemen, sort of five wounds. Um, and not fearless or anything. So, kind of weak on scoring, but having the wretched ones and the forsaken ones could just be a huge problem for some people. Um, yeah. I think his round one opponent, Trickett, I think I was commenting on that matchup to him, to Ryan, and saying, like, there's a... He's... <laughs> I won't like talk too much about Trigger's list, but I'm like, I think that your dragon is going to be dead, but that your wretched ones and your forsaken ones will be super difficult to deal with. Um, I think this is a fairly solid list, but I... Are there many people so far that can deal with these random movers easily? The forsaken ones aren't as big of a problem as the wretched ones, because the wretched ones are dishing out so many goddamn attacks. Um... I think Ryan will do, like, upper middle. I think if there's 22 players, I think Ryan will be something around the top seven. Um, particularly because I think people will underestimate this whole section and they'll run roughshod. Um, and some places, people won't be able to deal with his dragon and his dragon will just run roughshod as well. So I think he'll do pretty well and I would say, I guess... What am I saying? Top third for Ryan. If I'm going, if that's 22 people, seven. Yeah, top third. Uh, Angus Sturt Bray. So, haven't met Angus, but I've talked to him on Facebook a little bit. Um, he's bringing vampires. I think it's five vampires in this um, pack, to be honest. Man, it's already been 30 minutes. So I've got to speed up. I'm just going to stop rambling a bit. So, he's got double count, just like Hugo did, but he's going Von Karnstein Bloodsta Bloodline. He has got an Occultism Master, an Evoc Adept, 
and uh, they're pretty good in combat, but they are both on foot. He's got a Barrow King BSB, big unit of ghouls, uh, some smaller units of scoring, some chaff, some Barrow Guard, uh, Wraiths, which would be good with the big bubble from Von Karnstein, um, and two units of Vampire Knights. So, am I right in thinking that none of these guys has a horse? I think so. So I expect the Barrow King to be in the Barrow Guard, and I expect the Counts to decide if they want to be in ghouls, or maybe even small ghouls in some specific cases, uh, particularly because you'll be able to march, like the non-general will be able to march any unit, so you could play a bit wider if you needed to. Um, I'd probably actually almost expect the Barrow King and the small Count to go in the Barrow Guard, and the general to go in the ghouls. Um, how do I feel about it though? Uh, I think it's trying to do a little bit of everything. I don't think spending 1500 points, no, 1700, 1800 points on foot characters is ever a very good strategy. Um, yes, the ghouls and the barrier guard will be tough to deal with, and they do have swift stride, or at least one of them will because of Arrow of the Wolf, but. I think there's just a little bit... And occultism really shines on, like, a mobile caster who can zip around and make good use of um, particularly grave calls. So I just think this is lacking a little bit, mainly because all of these valuable, strong... Well, more the counts than the barracking, but these valuable, strong points are tied up in these blocks. And I don't think it's that hard to deal with these small units or these guys, or even the Vampire Knights, if you've got, like, the Vampire Knights are scarier, but they're still manageable. Um, I don't reckon... Mm, it's a little bit like the Dwarf problem, though, because, like, I don't think this list can win it, I don't think this list is going to be competing at the top end, but the further down you go, the more people are just going to go, like, yeah, I'm going to charge that unit with two Vampire Counts in it, like, for sure, that's what I'm going to do. Um, and I'm one of those guys a lot of the time, so I'm like, nah, I can beat it. And sometimes I'm right and sometimes I'm wrong. Um, uh, I think it will depend a lot on how people play into Angus. And if I am judging the scene correctly, I think that he won't play more than two people who run into his blocks. And he might struggle a bit when they don't. So I will say probably bottom half is my prediction. Henry has double Carnosaur Warlord. He's got two units of Saurus Warriors, he's got two Raptor Riders, he's got some Rippers, he's got uh, double Spearbacks, he's got some Chaff, and he has a Stygie. So with the J Crown, the Crown of the Wizard King, and the Stygie, he's got like a passable magic phase. It's not going to be great, but given the fact that he hasn't invested really any points into a Wizard, um, I guess the Stygie saw a bit, but um, it works well enough. I think, particularly because Crown of the Wizard King's gotten better with the um, number one spell changes. Uh, I actually think this list is pretty solid because the Alpha Carnos can be so good, but they can also kind of suck. I've played against enough of Ben's to be like, sometimes these guys are really good and sometimes they are not. So I think Henry's just going to have like an up and down weekend where some games he runs through people because they can't handle um, mainly the Carnosaurs, but like even big blocks of Saurus are pretty decent. Um, though I'd probably like to see them with spears myself. Um, yeah, the issue is going to have to come down to if his opponents can handle these Alpha Carnosaurs. Uh, and I think a lot of people won't. But so I think Henry will win either two or three games, basically. Um, I don't think he'll only win one, and I don't think he'll win more than three. Uh, and it'll all just come down to those alphas. James Milner, he has the best list in the event. You may recognize it. It's been on the channel before. I mean, a little bit different, but about 85%, or I think I did the calculation, said 89% of this list has been on my channel before. Um, he has our beloved, the Vampire Count on the horror. So taking the exact same build that I did where he's got the heirloom, the obsidian rock and reaper's harvest. Um, he's also got the same BSB build as I got. So the, uh, the, sh uh, flying horror knight's crown shield breaker guy, 
He's got an evocation adept. He's got a big unit of spears. He's got two small-ish units of ghouls. Um, and the thing to remember is the fact that the courtier, if he wants to, can sit in those ghouls and vanguard with them. He doesn't have vanguard on his own, but if he's joined to them, uh, he gets it. He's got some chaff. He's got some wraiths who I did not like, but other people use them well, so I won't criticize the choice. It depends on how well James is able to use them. Um, Phantom hosts are amazingly good. Like, how would I deal with them with my beast herds? I guess I've got enough monsters. I th oh. The two up ward save, though, against everything. See, I've always played into my own trap, the trap that I did to other people. I'm like, oh no, I've got a lot of attacks, but two up ward save is literally like you do six wounds. They take one, they take two because of crumble. They're so good. I would not I would not have an easy way to deal with them with my beast herds. I might end up having to send like a giant there and just be like, alright, we're gonna be here all day. <laughs> Hopefully I don't die. Uh, Vampire Spawn Wing Reapers. I reckon this is actually a super steady list. I don't really know how solid James is as a player. I think I might have met him, but like uh, I don't think we've played, so I don't know him well enough to say how well he can use the list. But I reckon it's a super steady list, and I think he's going to be top half. I'm going to have my faith in James, and this list is going to surprise people because people will not know how to play against some of the weird things in there. They won't know how to play against Phantom Host. They won't. They'll be surprised by how well-rounded the count on horror is and the little combo of the storm of wings on the court here him being able to fly out the way that storm of wings works on the skellies to often um be the sort of difference between them hitting on fives or hitting on fours or being hit on twos as opposed to threes uh there's a lot of little combos there that i think will work really well yeah, I reckon this is going to go... I'm going to say top half, just because I don't know how solid James is as a player. Um, if I knew it was being run by, like, one of the strong players, I'd be like, definitely podium. This is a good list, and it's going to surprise people. Uh, Joel Van Der Ven. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a gun line. Um, he's got a Div Master on the engine with the Lightning Reflexes upgrade, I believe. Uh, he's got a Great Griffin General. Pretty cool. He's got a BSB... So he's got a prelate with the locket. Important. Uh, he's got a big unit of heavy infantry with spears. A support unit. Some shooting. Some sort of chaff and shooting. This isn't a gun line at all. Um, uh, he's got two units of Knights of the Sun Griffin. He's got a cannon. He's got a steam tank. Well, a bit of a gun line. It's gun line adjacent. Um, he's got a unit of 21 flagellants. I think it's pr a pretty balanced list. Um, this will all really come down to, I think, one, if the opponent can kill Joel's wizard, because it's really, it's got probably like a two up or a three up armor save on that thing, so I think that it's, I think it's quite likely that opponents with good ranged threats can just kill that, um, and then I think as soon as that happens... There's not, like, the, the combat threats aren't that great. I don't really, I guess the div, the div buffs aren't amazing on them. I think it would just be, okay. So the two answers to this list will basically be, can I kill the wizard at range? Because if I do, I'm at a huge advantage. And two, what can I do with the steam tank? Because if you don't have an answer to a steam tank, it could screw you, even though you have an easy answer to kill that wizard. Um... I think this will do roughly average. Uh, so roughly middle of the pack. We got St. Willie. He's taking Ogres. He's got a Shamanism General. He's got a BSB with Cult Leader, so 18 inches. He's got a Mammoth Hunter with Destiny's Call. He's got a big block of bruises, two bruiser darts. He hasn't taken the champion. Rookie error. He's got four Tusker Cav with the Reroll 1's banner. A Canada. Three Chaff Cats, four Bombardiers, a Rockorex, and a Slave Giant. Um, I think this is just a similarly... Similar to the above, it's just sort of a solid list. Um, you can kind of tell what an Ogre player is planning on doing based on their lore, I find. 
So he's taken to shamanism. And he doesn't have a cannon. He's going to run at you. So Jack is basically here to fight combat. And he's pretty decent at it. The bruises play the four-up lottery where sometimes you're like, all right, I'm going to throw him to this combat. I should win easily. Oh, I only rolled two hits out of 18. Okay, I'm going to lose instead. Um, which is the reason I hate the big block. But I've also had other people use the big block against me, and that's always so good. It just doesn't work for me for some reason. Um, I think this is another roughly middle of the range um, list. Like, I think there it'll be able to play most things, but I think there will just be some times probably where Jack is outplayed, um, and he'll probably end up finishing middle of the pack. It's fairly solid, though. Like, it's got were three good combat threats, a support monster, a little bit of shooting, which I don't know what's enough to really matter. Um, support monster is essentially uh, what a mammoth hunter is as well. It's not a monster, but it's doing the same sort of thing. Um, oh yeah, I think, I think if Jack plays it well against like most of the lists, he will have a pretty good shot at winning. But there's probably going to be some of the really tough lists that he just... Like, if Hugo's list just avoids engaging the most important things, then he'll take off points... Like, uh, Hugo will take off points with his magic and then take off some support shit and Jack will sort of be left not doing much. Similarly, Jack's only got one answer for things, really, which is killed it in combat. Um... So dealing with the Dwarves might be some trouble for him because there's a lot of points tied up um, in big blocks that Jack is going to want to take on, but maybe doesn't have the tools to do so. Particularly because he's got big footprints on his guys, so it's harder to sort of like dance around and avoid things. Uh, Matt Stanley, um, he's got basically double dragon high elves. So one's a Pyromaster, one is the High Prince with the Nova Flare. Um, and that's basically the entire list. He's got five chariots. Two of them are either chariots for champions so that they can take challenges. But this is just a question of, can you deal with two dragons? Because um, Matt's not going to play avoidance. He doesn't have that many tools to even try. But Matt's going to try and go into combat with these guys. Um, and try and beat you in combat. And it's just a matter of, can you beat these dragons? Mm, with my base turns, I'm not sure that I can. Um, I think both I mean this guy is less of a combat threat than the High Prince but this guy's also a Wizard Master of Pyro so um, I can deal with this guy in combat this guy is very tough but that's it it's just can you deal with two dragons um, and I think Matt is going to have a weekend where basically <laughs> he'll have some opponents who go oh shit no I can't deal with the dragons um, and he'll win. He'll have some opponents who go, yes, I can deal with the dragons, they're dead, and Matt will lose. And then he'll have at least one game where his opponent goes, oh, shit, I can't deal with the dragons. Oh, I can if I get the flank charge with my big lock of ranked up infantry and challenge out with my champion and break you. Um, which is definitely going to happen at least one point. Uh, Matt's played like one game in like the last year and a half, so um, he's not exactly practiced at the moment, and I think there will be some mistakes. Uh, I am going to tip that Matt finishes in the bottom half. Luke Knight, terrific bloke, but he's taking Dwarves, so he's a bit worse of a bloke. Um, he's got an Anvil, he's got an Engineer General, um, he's got a King, who's just on foot, but he's, like, he's a smashy King. Um, he's got a Runesmith. No, I'm getting lost in this list. Um, Rune Devouring... A little bit protected. He's, so he's got some shooting. He's got a lot of shooting, in fact. Uh, organ Gun Catapult. Three units of Marksman. So I think this is... Pretty close to a corner camping kind of army. Um, that then, once you get there, tries to hold you up on his massive blocks. Um, although he does have the U two, three to ten Seekers. He can probably try... I. <sighs> I think this is just going to be a game, like a classic dwarf game, where if you don't let the organ gun just kill all your valuable models by moving into its range without cover or anything, 
you'll probably win. And if you do do that, you probably will lose. Um, I think most people at this point understand not to do that with organ guns. So I think uh, Luke's going to have some trouble with engaging his opponent. Um, cause this, yeah, I think Luke will finish bottom half. I think this list is just classic sort of slow dwarves that often smart opponents can avoid losing too much to. Uh, next up we've got Alex. How far down am I? Uh, 16 and 21. So, okay. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. Um, he has two marshals on Griffin who are kid of combat. He's got a BSB who's trying to survive, I guess. And I don't know what Death Warrant does, but he's fine. Um, he's got a Pyro Master and he has a Prelate. So there's no locket. No locket. That's an issue. Um, he's got some shooting. He's got a big block of heavy infantry and a small block. He's got some shooting and chaff. Big block of Imperial Guard. Chaff and shooting, more shooting. Uh, this, I mean, mainly I think this is like uh, a deceptively. I think I've talked to Alex about this before. I think it's a deceptively combat army because um, these guys are sort of like I'm going to move up and shoot you. Like I don't care if I die. I'm not really there to stand back and shoot. It's not a gun line. It's quite a mobile army that actually tries to engage you um, quite aggressively. But it has enough shooting there that it's softening things up enough that he can press aggressively. Um, I've seen Alex play it before to some reasonable success. Yeah, I think he, I think he's done fairly well with it most of the time since he's taken it out. Um, and I think it's fairly solid. I think it's a good balance of like combat and shooty. It's just, I don't know, Empire... Are one of those armies that oftentimes I look at and I, like I just look at them, and unless they've got the big cav star with the scary characters that are fast, it's like I don't know because those great Griffin characters aren't amazing. They're they're decent, like they're not they're not bad and they're not expensive, but they're not they're not like Actars vampires, for instance. They can't just dominate a game. Um, Pyro Master. Yeah, I, I mean, I reckon Alex is a solid player, and Alex is pretty good with this list, so I'm going to think that he is top half, but I... What are the other lists? Mm, yeah, I don't reckon that... I don't reckon he's going to be pushing for podium. I'm going to say top half for Alex. Uh, we've got Glenn, whose list, I think... I mean, I like a lot of ID lists. I think ID is such a great book, but I think Glenn has a really, really cool list here. So... He has uh, an Alchemy Master on the Bastion. He's then got two Viziers. One of them's his BSB, and both of them are on a Bull. So I think what this is, is this one has 3-up armor. So he's got a 3-up armor uh, against Magical, or a 1-up against Non-Magical. Uh, the other guy has got 2-up. He's got 2-up. So And they've both got a 5-up ward save. So they're fairly... I mean, they're fairly comparable to the Marshals, I think, but I think the Bull's better than the Griffin. And they both got ward saves. Whereas, uh, I think that gives a ward save against AP6. Oh, he's got, no, uh, no, that must do something else. He's got Death Cheetah, so he's got Regen. Um, I don't know why I don't like these Griffins very much but I really do like these bulls. I mean, I, I mean they are cheaper. I, don't know, I feel like, at, at the very least, maybe I'm uh, undervaluing them in Alex's list, but I can see in Glenn's list sort of like the mobility and threat that they give, I think is really uh, going to be quite useful for him because he's got this big block of Ziggurat regular blunderbuss Infernal Warriors that his Bastion definitely goes in. Um... And then he's got two vassal units because everyone has them because they're just handing out I get reroll to wound um, tokens. He's got two units of five Kidim Incarnates who I think are great but hard to use because they don't have a musician. So getting them in the right... make Having them in the right spot where 
they're going to be useful and they're not just going to be run around can be difficult. Um, I don't know how, what Glenn's experience is with them, so I don't know if he's happy with that or if he struggles with that, but I think they're a really, really good unit when they're used well. And then he's got two units of four to reconnoiter with great weapons, which similar to when I was talking about Skiltos list, I was like, I think that's the better, like rather than doing the big bodyguard unit that costs like 1,200 points, um, I think this is the better way to do it because these are more, these are a less central part of your army, which is I think where the anointed really shine. Um, overall, I think Glenn is missing a bit of shooting. Like I think given that he's got these bulls, he could do probably without a unit of Taruk, or maybe without one of the units of Kadim Incarnates. Because um, Incarnates are also one of those units that I feel like one unit is really good, the second unit is not as valuable as the thir as the first. Um, just because it's sort of like... There's only so many things on the board that the Kadim Incarnates are an absolute terror for. Um... And because they've got that issue with the Muso, sometimes investing too heavily in these immobile pieces, I think is going to be difficult. So I think personally, I would probably drop these and I would like take two Titan Mortars or something. They probably cost 300 points now, so you probably couldn't do that. I'd shift some points around, I think. I'd drop these guys and I'd take more shooting and then I'd be really, really happy with this list. But I still think it's a really good list. He's got these four like medium combat threats that are very hard to deal with if you don't have the right tools. He has an alchemy master who is uh, dishing out rerolls to wound for these guys. He's already got that. I guess the alchemy master probably more helps these guys uh, with the armor. Also helps with giving, because he's going to have incendiary tokens everywhere. So giving other things rerolls to wound is always handy. Um, and the damage, which... Um, is probably what he's more looking at alchemy for. Um, and then he's got these two mobile support characters, which make up for the fact that... Uh, I mean, the Anointed are semi-mobile. They're sort of... They're fast at infantry. They're not true cav, I guess, in their mobility. Uh, but these guys are not. So I think that sort of covers up some of his mobility issues. Um, I think this is a really, 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 really solid list. And if Glenn plays it well, I think Glenn will podium. Uh, next up, we've got my list. Um, I'm not going to go into this very deeply because I've played with an almost identical list um, in... I can't remember what tournament it was. Um, maybe who let the doge out? No. I don't know. I don't know what tournament it was, but um, I played with basically the same list, just with a different core. Uh, this is with the new points update where I lose Dark Rain. So I've got my three um, chariot models. I've got my four monsters, two Gortex, two Giants. So I've got seven single model things. Basically, the chariots can join together if they want to. Um, then I've got two units of Gargoyles for Chaff. And then my core is just two units of Ambushing Wildhorns, a unit of Ambushing Mongrels. So I've got a lot of flexibility for... Um, if I want my scoring on the board or not, I guess. Um, the Mongrels are a bit expensive, and they're sort of an experiment, because I haven't been happy with my core. And playing very different lists to this, I've enjoyed having Mongrels. I think they're good, but I don't know if they'll be as good when I don't have the Evoc Adept or Totems. So we'll see how they go, but they have been surprisingly efficient for me when I've been trying out Mongrels in the past. As in the recent past. Where are we? Ben. Hello, Ben Wadsworth speaking. Wadsworth. So he's got Saurians, and this is sort of back to a traditional style for him because he's been flitting about a few different lists trying to find something that works for him. Uh, and this is sort of like old reliable um, in terms of comfort level. So he has the Kuatl, who's got, I think, plus two to cast something else. And ability to choose between Pyro or Alchemy without... Because he's got the Essence. But Sun Tablet gets past that restriction of not being able to take 5 and 6. Um, I played against the Pyro version with a quite block-heavy infantry list for Beast Herds. And I think I lost like 70 wounds to Pyromancy. Uh, this guy can be absolutely brutal in the right matchup. Um, 
He's also got uh, his, his old favourite, the Warlord on a Raptor with a 1-up, 4-up, Mana Blessed Inscription, the Great Weapon. Um, he's got two units of uh, Soros Warriors for scoring, two units of Skinks for shooting and a bit of scoring, and maybe some Chaff if needed. He's got two units of two Spearbacks, who are always pumping out, in my opinion, surprisingly large amounts of range damage. Um, two units of Ramphodons, two Taurosaurs, each with a Bolt Thrower. And a Thyra Scutus with the poison attack um, thing on top. So, what do I think of this list? I think it's really solid and balanced. Um, every time I play against it, it's a lot of trouble. Ben did point out that the Taurosaurs are kind of slow. Um, so, they're sort of like a counter charge threat that isn't quite able to extend as much as you'd really want a counter charge threat to. Um, but I think it's got a pretty... I mean, it is quite range damage heavy. In reality. But when you get there, it does have some fairly solid combat potential with the Taurosaurs, with um, even the Saurians, depending on what they're fighting, and with the Raptor. Um, the Rippers can be really troublesome. Like for an army like Beast Turds, where you don't have much range damage. Um, I think they can be really troublesome. So... I think this list is really quite solid, and I think Ben will do really well with it up until like one game. There'll be one game where everything goes really badly. <laughs> um, it might not be the last game, but I think there'll be a game where it goes really badly, and the thing is, I think after it goes really badly, it might go downhill. That's my prediction. So I think I'm going to say day one, Ben will be flying high, and day two, it'll be like dice are just going to fuck him. <laughs> He's going to come down. Uh, and then I think he'll finish top half. No, I think... I think he'll finish top third. Yeah. Uh, Sam is bringing demons. So he's got a courtesan who scouts witchcraft adept. He's got a deceiver with uh, guiding poison uh, who scouts and is an adept. Oh, oh, protein magic. Um, he's got a Harbinger, who is an adept of Evox, so very solid uh, uh, magic setup, basically, there. Um, he's got a big unit of Myrmidons and a big unit of Succubi. Presumably, I think that he probably wants to put the Deceiver and the Harbinger in the Myrmidons. There'll be times when he puts one in the Succubi, particularly because they're 23. It makes me think he wants to put a 24th model in. Maybe he wants to put the... Okay, I think he wants to put the uh, the Deceiver in the Succubi and the Harbinger in the Myrmidons, but he'll probably give himself options in some games that'll change. Um, he's got three units of Claude Fiends and he's got two Furies. So most of this list, except the Myrmidons... Okay, yeah, so it's all scouting, and he just puts down the Myrmidons, basically. Oop. Um, it's pretty good. It's pretty fast. Uh, the Claude Fiends, the Courtesan. How much damage magic does he have? Evoc Adept and Protein. I don't know what laws the Deceiver has. Um, thing is, he's got really good magic for combat. But he doesn't have much by way of um, damage magic, which I think is something that Demon Legions really like to have. And I think the best Demon Legions lists typically have damage magic. Even if they go like a budget magic phase, I think they go with a budget damage magic phase. He is extremely fast with the Claude Fiends. Um... Poison on the sucky is good. Uh, yeah. I think this is, with all the dark hide, I think it's a little bit of a... Not a... Well, yeah, a meme. Let's say a meme. Um, I think it's fairly solid, and I think Sam's pretty solid. So I think this will finish top half, but I think there's just going to be some matchups that he gets into, and he struggles to deal with, like, high toughness. Um... And like, yeah, Claude Fiends is the sort of thing where it's like, yep, they're great, they're really fast, but sometimes their combat output is just underwhelming. So I'm going to... 
giving a lot of people top half. I don't know if I can fit all of them in at this point. All right, let's say top half, whatever. Um, actor, actor is going to be a podium threat. He's probably going to be on the podium. He's probably not going to win because he never seems to win. He's always like a second or third, but like the guys who win tournaments aren't always on the podium, whereas Akhtar's always there on the podium. Um, he has two super, super good vampire counts, Brotherhood of the Dragon. Um, this is what basically what he was running before, like code and everything. So it's, it's tried, it's tested, it's what he knows. It's, what, it's a super solid list. Basically, he's got them. He's got two units of vampire knights. Uh, sometimes both go in one. Sometimes they're on their own. Sometimes there's one in each. It's a lot of variability there. Um, he's got a big block of 40 ghouls who are troublesome for some armies. Like beast herds. Um, a lot of things are troublesome for beast herds. Uh, two units of zombies for chaff. And then he's got a bunch of... Uh, sorry, not for chaff, for scoring. And then he's got a bunch of chaff. So, uh, this list... It almost looks like it's investing too heavily, you know, into so few units, but it's also where all his points are. So if you, if you don't kill the blocks, the counts or the knights, you're getting like, what's that? Uh, that together is, um, like 500 plus you're getting like a thousand points and everything else is really hard to get points out of. So, um, it's a super solid list, and Actar's got a podium. Uh, Dave, tough nut, trick it. I tell you what, it is tough to nut to trick it. Um, so this is quite an interesting list that I don't think I've seen much of the same idea with elsewhere. Um, it's quite MSU, which is sort of Trickett's favourite. He's really good with MSU. Like, he's got... A very good control in the movement phase where it's the sort of thing where like he will be able to force you into situations where he's like yes I'm going to lose this unit but then you're going to lose something else if you don't charge that unit you're fucked anyway um, Trigger is like easily my pick for the tournament there's only one other list left um, Trigger's the best player here uh, and I don't, I don't have a strong idea of exactly what his list is going to do, uh, but he's really good with MSU and cause he's put this list together, I'm like, there's definitely, there's definitely something good here. And you can sort of see it just in the case that it's got, um, uh, his core is basically four units of disposable strength five high edgy fast attacks, um, disposable fast clawed fiends. Blazing Glories, which were a super big problem um, for a lot of specific units. Um, and it's hard to sort of focus on them when there's everything else running around. The Bloatfires, who are an absolute fucking pain to deal with with their toxic hits back, their high quality attacks themselves, and just being 12 toughness, 4, 5 up wounds. Um, all for a package of 330. Like, I think there's a lot of medium threats in this list which is sort of exactly what you're looking for with your MSU where you're wanting um, you wanting to be able to flood the board with threats and then be better at movement than your opponent is um, and I think yeah I think Trigger's going to be the best in the movement phase at the event um, and that means that his MSU list is almost certain to shine I haven't even gotten into his magic which is I think the thing that I think Sam lacked um where Trigget's got an Evoke Adept, he's got a Thaumaturgy Adept, so he's got Reroll to Wound, Whispers, and then he's got the minus one randomizer from Thauma. Um, so he's got a lot of ways to boost his to wound rolls, basically. Then he's got Mark of the Eternal Champion on both of them, and he's got Mark of the Eternal Champion on his Imps. So he's starting off with three of the Hereditaries, which is really good for, like, say, uh, Lockie's Dragons, where it's like, hey, like, I've got a lot of spells that aren't that high casting value, and I can just start pinging wounds off your valuable shit. Um, plus, the Thalma guy can probably take, it probably will take either Breath Weapon or Hand of Heaven. Um, so, probably take Breath Weapon most of the times, I think, because then basically he's got four um, combat buffs and four uh, range damage cause things, because the, the Breath can be either. Um, and I think with this list, basically, Trickett is going to 
dominate position on the board because he is going to be with not that heavier points investment really threatening valuable single models and at the same time having a bunch of like cascading threats of yes these guys are up here and they're vulnerable but as soon as you kill them you're vulnerable so how are you getting my points off me you're gonna let me charge you with them sure they're faster than you and they're gonna do some damage then i'm gonna charge you next turn with the other stuff anyway um I don't think I've seen a list in this event that Trickett doesn't want to play. Maybe... Maybe Glenn. But then, I think... Maybe. Maybe Glenn. Because the fire... He doesn't have that much fire, because... Doesn't have the flaming attacks except for the incarnates. All of those are magical, even if he gets the spells off, so which means that he doesn't have the easy way to deal with the bloat flyers. I think if Trickett play I think Trickett wouldn't want to play Glenn, Glenn's list, but I think Trickett will be able to play well enough that um, he'll be able to force some mistakes out of Glenn, basically, just because Trickett's such a strong player. Um he is easily my pick for the tournament. I'd be... Like, not just do I back him, but I would say I'd be surprised if he doesn't win. I guess... I don't know how he deals with Akhtar's list. That'd be a really interesting game, I think. Because a lot of Akhtar's units can just go, that's fine. I've got my... Like, he puts his two counts in his... Um, in either of Vampire Knights, and Tricky goes, I can't touch them with anything now, I don't think. Um... And the ghouls will take wounds with them as they die. So some of these things might just give up points to the ghouls. That'd be an interesting matchup, but they're on ATC together. I'm sure they've done the matchup. Um, yeah, that's what I think about that one. Lee's list, Sylvan Elves. So Druidism Master. He's got a Forest Hunter BSB with a spear for distracting. Two big units of Dryads, a unit of Heath Hunters. Big unit of Forest Rangers, which is where the BSB will go. Two Tree Fathers, four Thicket Beasts, 11 Blade Dancers, seven Pathfinders, seven Briar Maidens. Um, so he's got a little bit of shooting. I don't know if it's enough. It's definitely enough to help. I think I probably want a little bit more shooting if I was doing a list in this style. Um, I think this list is fairly fairly solid mm. but I've seen a decent bit of pyro <laughs> I don't know if I'm just overthinking it I think it's going to be a little bit vulnerable in some matchups so like if he plays against either of the ID players it's just the sort of thing where for Sylvan Elves they're just getting blown apart a lot of the time by all the um, flaming attacks and shit Particularly because he's taking Druidism, which means that he's more vulnerable to flaming because one of the most important spells in Druidism is the regen. So uh, that not being useful in a lot of combats is going to be a problem against ID. I think this might be... I think this is a fairly solid list, but perhaps at the wrong event. Um, and I may just be misjudging the kind of things that have come before, but I think there's going to be a lot of hard matchups for Lee where he bleeds valuable elves um, and ends up lacking the combat, uh, like the, the bodies to push, I guess. Um, it also does sort of depend, I guess, how Druidism does, because sometimes you can just strong arm your way through things with Druidism. Uh, I don't know how... I think Lee's been playing quite a few games on UB recently, so he'll be probably more practiced than other people. And I think I've only said, like, two people in the bottom half, but I'd still say I'd expect Lee to be in the top half. So, I'm not going to go back and change anything, but I think Lee will do solid, but I think he's going to have some tough matchups. So, I'm relying on the fact that he, I think, is going to be more practiced than a lot of people at this event. Um... And, like, he's, he was doing pretty solidly before things, like, COVID and shit shut stuff down. He was getting really good results with Beast Herds. Um, and I think he's sort of 
played enough games recently that he will maybe warm into the tournament quicker, even though he's got tough... I think he'll have some tough matchups. I think that he'll, even in some of those, be able to outplay his opponent to do well. So I would say top half, which means that we've got like 80% of the field that I've given top half, but whatever. Um, in terms of... Yeah, I need to go to bed soon. In terms of podium... My four contenders. So Trickett is number one, and that's locked in. And then we've got Akhtar, Lockie, and Glenn. So it's really a question. Akhtar's going to be on the podium. I don't know if he's going to be two or three. I think he's going to be two. So third spot is going to be Lockie or Glenn, and Lockie has a pyromancy wizard against Glenn's ID. And quite possibly, if they're up in that range, they might have to play each other. I'd give the advantage there to Glenn. So I'm going to say podium will be Trickett, Akhtar, Glenn. That's my prediction. However, I'm playing Glenn in round one. So Glenn won't end up being able to podium because I'm going to 20 him. So unfortunately, it's just going to be a, a thing where he gets outplayed the entire time, and gets 20 and then he starts off so badly, maybe ends up with 80. I guess he'll have to come from a submarine. Um, I'm just going to look at pairings. Quick. Oh, they're not even up. I just know that I'm playing Glenn. I know a couple of things. So, because I grudged, grudged Glenn, Ryan, where's my boy Ryan? Ryan, he's playing Trickett, and he's going to lose. Um, I do think Trickett will have some trouble with Forsaken. Well, not so much the second ones as the wretched ones, but I don't know they're going to be able to do enough damage. I think Trickett's going to come away with the objective is breakthrough. He's going to come away with the objective and probably a small points win, so I think like a 15-5 to Trickett. And the other one I know about is Alex is playing Angus, and if I remember correctly, we've got lots of shooting, decent combat, against the on-foot vamps. I think Alex's shooting is going to do too much, and not enough of Angus's valuable points are going to make it across, so I think that uh, Alex is going to win that one. He might have trouble, because he's still quite slow. Uh, scoring, 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 scoring. I think that it's going to be a draw on objective and then a 14-6 to Alex on points. Those are my guesses. Uh, that's all I've got. I need to go to bed.